Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and those are nowhere close to the most important name you will hear during this video. That would be the name of Dylan Edwards, because can you believe it, folks? One year after uh, he spent time at Colorado, something that people said even when the high school recruitment was going down could be a possibility, especially considering the way the transfer portal works now. It is coming to fruition. Dylan Edwards is a wildcat. He transfers to K-State after a season with the Buffaloes. And look, we there was production last year. We saw that. There was potential. We have seen that over you know many years now, going back to his time at Derby. And there's also connections galore to getting himself to K-State. And uh, he, he did enough last year that he's still a very highly thought of transfer portal guy. The eighth best running back in the portal – according to the on three industry rankings. So that combines rivals 24 seven and on three together, um, a top 100 player overall in this year's portal cycle. And again, this is also combining the guys that went in in December with the guys that came in this spring, but this is, there's so many ways to say that this is an awesome and a great pickup for K state in so many different ways. But I think the main place to start is probably just talking about how exciting it is for people that are going to be watching K-State and that are K-State fans, because so many are all already all over it, you're going to have a backfield that has Avery Johnson, DJ Giddens, and Dylan Edwards, three of the best players in, in college football this upcoming year, um, certainly in the Big 12, and I think the potential is there for all of them to be significant players nationally. But it's all three guys being from the state of Kansas that I think gets a lot of K-State people excited as well and just how special that is for people to watch together. Yeah, I mean, there's a, what, a, what a world that we're, we're living in right now. I think there was a lot of people that thought that this was a possibility before. I mean, we talked about how this was a possibility even in December, how it was kind of looking like if he was to transfer that case, it would probably be one of the main players and, it comes to fruition today that Dylan Edwards makes the the call to K-State. And it, it's something that everybody should be very, very excited about. Just so much potential home run hitter, the perfect compliment to DJ Giddens. I mean, we talked about all leading up to the season and throughout the season last year where you kind of lacked that explosiveness because Treshawn Ward probably wasn't as explosive as you were hoping for. Dylan Edwards is explosive is if you look up the word explosive like dylan edwards's picture is probably in there in the dictionary because when he touches the ball he can score every single time that he gets it so to have him avery johnson dj giddens jace brown by the way we were talking uh before we recorded having jace brown avery johnson and dylan edwards be one two and three and the numbers is pretty cool and it's just fun to see because you know how just like intrinsic this 2023 class was for K-State and how they went through it. And they all know Dylan Edwards. I mean, it was Jace Brown and Cameron Salas were the two, the first two people that really, I don't want to say leaked it, but kind of do, did the cryptic tweets of, hey, They hinted like, that something big had gone down. Yeah, like they, they hinted that something big had gone down. And I think that that kind of shows you how close that Dylan Edwards got with everybody at K-State and that's another reason to be excited yeah no there I mean just so many reasons to be excited for this if you're a K-State fan and uh, you talk about the the compliment that Dylan Edwards can be to DJ Giddens and I, I think that's an important part of all this is I saw some people in the immediate aftermath of when Dylan Edwards goes in the portal who are like gotta get him to K-State want him badly to be wearing purple but then people would say, well, what about DJ Giddens? Like, you don't want to lose DJ Giddens. I don't think you have to worry about that. I think DJ Giddens, his standing on this team is in as good of a place as it can be, whether Dylan Edwards is here or not. Like, DJ Giddens is still going to be on track for 20 carries a game next season. He's going to be your main running back. And some of that is because he's got the experience. He's already done it. He's proven. But also it comes down to, Dylan Edwards does not have to be your traditional just turn around handing the ball type of back. K State is going to have so many different ways to use him. And we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll talk you and I with Fan later today. But I mean, think of how many times last year we actually saw two running backs in the backfield with K State. Not very often. Um, no. But now you're going to have the personnel where I think 
it makes sense to try it because even when you know Deuce and DJ were were playing together, it didn't happen probably as many times as people would think. But the possibilities are going to be endless. So I don't think you have to worry about anything with DJ Giddens. This is truly just a a good football team becoming better because they've added another highly talented player. I'll even add too that there's plenty of touches to go around for both. I mean, we know how awesome DJ Giddens was last year. And Trayshawn Ward still had 141 plays from scrimmage. And that doesn't even add in that Dylan Edwards is probably going to step in. And I would be stunned if he doesn't step in and is the immediate kick and punt returner. Yeah. So, like, I, I feel like just from that standpoint, there's going to be so many touches to go around for those two that you can keep both of them very, very happy. And I think that it, for the long term with K State, I think that. DJ Giddens understands that, hey, I can't be getting the ball 30, 35 times a game. Like, I need somebody else because DJ Giddens is a pro. So, like, it, this is probably I, – I would be willing to bet that this is probably DJ Giddens' last season at K-State anyway. So, if you have this little bridge with Dylan Edwards, I, I think that it, for the, it just plays well for the long run for everybody and probably makes K-State – I know they're already the betting favorite – to win the Big 12, but I, I think that this kind of cements that, and I see, I think that you see the odds go down even, even uh, lower. Yeah, I think we talked about this uh, not too long ago, but like if you go and look at, at how um, things shaped up for for Deuce Vaughn in the 2022 season, and you know, kind of how K State ended up playing things out, they played 14 games that season. If you go through and divvy it up. Deuce averaged close to 21 carries a game, just shy of that number. But like that's Deuce Vaughn and DJ Giddens has done some things that like, it's not crazy to say that he can't be just as accomplished in terms of a game by game basis. And things because we've seen it before, but the talent that Deuce Vaughn had, like you to say, Oh, you're going to give him the ball a thousand times a game. And yeah. K-State did try to find ways to force feed him at times, but they also had DJ Giddens and they were comfortable using him in the right spots. Like I think the, I think the personalities are fine too. I don't think it's like a, I need the ball. I think you're absolutely right. Like DJ Giddens is a guy that also understands I can be at my best when, you know, it's not every, every, every single snap I have to be out there. And that's kind of where things were trending this coming season for K state. That's why even before Dylan Edwards was in the portal, you know, they were talking to Devon Booth, the Utah state running back. They knew that they needed a legit number two this season and both the guys may have ended up being better options than Trayshawn Ward was last year. And now, I mean, with the possibilities truly are endless for K-State. Yeah, I, I think that you're going to see a lot of teams just have a massive headache when K-State shows up on their schedule now because there's just more people to worry about. And you can never have too many weapons on offense. Connor Riley will find a way to get everybody the football but this just makes K-State such a headache to prepare for yeah. and way off topic, but K-State should probably be one of the top like five, six most fun teams to play with on NCAA football 25. <laughs> now, like this backfield is going to be unstoppable in the video game. Yeah, that's uh that is a good point as well. DJ Giddens last year averaged just over 17 carries a game. Uh, and that, that, I mean, that includes games last season where, uh, he had 38 touches in the game against UCF where he just went nuclear. Uh, he also had 31 carries against Iowa State in the snow. Like there, He got his when he, they needed it, and there were certainly games where they needed it, but like you, you want to have options. And Dylan Edwards is more than just an option there for you. He is a weapon, and I think more so to the – obviously the, the effect of Treshawn Ward last year where Treshawn Ward was just a good second option behind DJ Giddens where it was like, Hey, you know what? Like the Texas tech game, DJ Giddens had an off day. Treshawn Ward was able to, to step up in that game, but Dylan Edwards and, and DJ Giddens, like we're talking about the potential for any given game. K-State could have two 100 yard running backs. And that doesn't even include the fact that they have what is probably one of the most talented running quarterbacks uh, in, in college football. And I think this is a benefit to Avery Johnson as well for those of the people that are out there, they're like, well, he's so dynamic in the run game. Like, you want to use him in that way. We've been talking a lot about how K-State isn't probably going to run him as much as people think. In a weird way, adding another runner like Dylan Edwards to the equation 
I think actually opens up the run game more for Avery Johnson because so much focus is going to be put on stopping Giddens and Edwards that there is a, a greater likelihood that Avery Johnson is able to avoid more hits now because of, you know, there's already going to be a lot of attention there, but I just think so much of it is going to be devoted to running back. And if you put like any of the times that all three of those guys are on the field at the same time, I, defenses are going to have trouble with them. And then going even bigger picture here, think if you get the production from the receivers that I think K-State is banking on this year, where we think this is the potential for probably one of the better groups of receivers K-State has had in a long time, probably going back to, you know, like probably the 2014 K-State football team. Um, that like the, just everything is setting up for this offense right now. And, and Dylan Edwards, he, he was not going to be the key to this offense being good next season. I think that those were already in place, but he's going to make this offense kind of like what you said, like just a, a headache for other defenses to figure out. The other thing that, I mean, you kind of hinted at it a little bit, but having both of the running backs be dynamic and explosive with Avery Johnson and kind of to avoid the hits, I, I think that there's a chance that now instead of you see Avery Johnson bust out like a 15, 20 yard run, I think that when they pick their spots with the two running backs on the field and run Avery instead, that there's a chance that instead of a 15, 20 yard gain, that it could be like a 40 yard run where Avery Johnson just really explodes and gets out of there in a, in a hurry because there's going to be so much uh, attention devoted to the running backs. And the, other, the, other, the last thing that I think I'll kind of hit on here uh, was pointed out by uh, both of our friends, uh, Scott Wildcat, about uh, the, the history of Kansas running backs. I mean, this is going to be the third Kansas running back that's going to be on K-State's roster this season. So, I mean, I think that for how small K-State or for how, for how small Kansas is as a state with population and everything with high school football, I, I think that it's crazy when you look at the amount of talent at running back that's came through the high school ranks recently. And, I mean, now you're going to see it at K-State. I mean, it, it's – I just called DJ Giddens a pro. If Dylan Edwards can kind of continue his trajectory – even with his small stature, I mean, he, it's likely that he could be a pro. Yeah. Yep. No doubt about it. And we, we talked about this when Dylan Edwards was a high school recruit. And now in this position, like there's no better place to be a small running back than K state. Like, because what you're saying, I mean, it's not even just relying on, Hey, 20 years ago, you know, a guy named Darren Sproles went here, but it is this current coaching staff took Deuce Vaughn from a three-star recruit that not a ton of people were interested in, brought him in day one. He was the best running back on the team. And three years later, he was a six round pick in the NFL. Like, and I like, I, this is not meant to be disrespectful to Deuce Vaughn in any way, but Dylan Edwards seems to be even more physically gifted than Deuce Vaughn was prior to, you know, Deuce really taking off at K-State. Like, there are more traits that go to Dylan Edwards. Like he's faster than Deuce Vaughn. So yes. I, that's there. It really is just a, a wild situation for K-State because it's an embarrassment of riches in their backfield. And uh, I'm going to say it a lot until we actually see it, but I think we'll be saying it even after we do, but the possibilities truly will be endless with this team. Yeah. And I just think that you look at this from a big picture perspective, it's good for the future too, because Dylan Edwards has three years left. So you don't, you probably don't have to go after a transfer running back next off season either. And you feel good about where the room sits. I mean, when, when uh, we did the video about Davon Rice committing to K-State in the 24 or in the, this past class in the 24 class, uh, we talked about how he was kind of like a, a mini Dylan Edwards. It's like, if you get both of those two in the backfield too, like K-State, the future in the backfield is extremely bright. And I think that this just really keeps the ceiling wide open with Avery Johnson under center. Absolutely. Big pickup for K-State, really significant. We'll have more on the Cats moving forward. Uh, for everything K-State online, go to KSO. Find us at On3. You can also stay locked in here on the YouTube page and the podcast platforms as well. And uh, we'll have a lot more recruiting stuff going on because high school recruiting is still going. We're getting closer to official visits kicking off, but also transfer portal still going to be going on for the next couple of days, basketball and football, as they both try to land guys that are still out there. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.